let's be sure we understand the big ideas from section 1.4. There are three key factors which influence our strength of evidence. Whether the test is one or two-sided, the difference between the statistic and the null value, and the sample size used in the study. Discussed previously is the new wrinkle to hypothesis testing discussed in the introduction. If a test is meant to be two-sided, the research question will be phrased to say we are looking for a change or a difference, rather than simply saying we are looking for an increase or decrease. In a two-sided test, the alternative hypothesis uses a not equal to sign, rather than a less than or greater than sign. Remember the sign of the alternative hypothesis determines the direction we go from the statistic when finding the p-value. If the alternative is a less than sign, we start at the observed statistic and count dots to the left. If the alternative hypothesis is a greater than sign, we start at the observed statistic and count dots to the right. The second option is shown in the left-hand plot, which is what you should have gotten for question 3c in your exploration. The observed statistic of 248 out of 457, or 0.5427, is where the counted red dots start and extend towards the right tail. Since we are seeing if the red uniforms have an advantage, or if the proportion of matches won by the red uniform contestant was greater than 0.5. When we change to make this a two-tailed test, we are still going to start at the statistic and count dots into the smaller tail, whichever direction that is, then go the same distance from the statistic to the null value on the other side of the null value, and count dots into the other tail. In this exploration, we again start at the observed statistic, 0.5427. Since this is on the right side of the plot, we start counting at our observed statistic and go to the right, the same as we did in the right-sided test. But because this is now a two-sided test, we have to count dots in this other tail as well. So first, find the distance from the null hypothesis, 0.5, to the observed statistic, 0.5427. That distance is 0.0427. Now we need to go the same distance on the other side of the null. 0.5 minus the distance, 0 0.0427, gives us our starting point, 0.4573. Finally, count the dots in the left tail at or beyond the proportion, 0.4573, and add the dots in this tail plus the dots in this tail to get our total p-value of 0 0.0680. Since we are counting dots in both tails, the p-value must be higher in the two-sided test compared to the one-sided test. In fact, the p-value of a two-sided test is roughly double that of a one-sided test, as long as the observed statistic is in the direction of the alternative hypothesis. Larger p-values indicate weaker evidence against the null hypothesis. Statistic and the null value. This one should be fairly intuitive. The more different our data is from the null hypothesis, in the direction of the alternative at least, the less we believe the null hypothesis. Again, here I show you what you should have gotten for part 3c, where the observed statistic was 248 out of 457, or 0.5427. There were 27 of our 1,000 simulated proportions, at least that far above the null value of 0.5, so the p-value was 0.027. If the observed statistic was 253 out of 457, or 0.554, a value even further from the null of 0.5, there are now only 9 out of 1,000 dots at least that extreme, so our p-value drops to 0.009. The farther the observed statistic is from the null value, the further in the tail of the null distribution it will be, resulting in a smaller p-value or stronger evidence against the null hypothesis. Now for the effective sample size. This is a key idea throughout the course, so be sure you have this in your notes. As sample size increases, variability decreases, or the standard deviation of the plot gets smaller. You'll see that in a formula in exploration 1.5, but for now, just look at the plots above. They are all on the same scale, but the sample size changes from n equals 32 on the left, to n equals 128 in the middle, to n equals 256 on the right. Clearly, variability is decreasing as sample size increases. What does that mean for strength of evidence? 
If you add an observed sample proportion of 0.62 to each plot, you can get a p-value for each sample size. The observed result is not changing, but since the variability decreases, there are fewer dots in the tail beyond the statistic as you increase sample size. So increasing sample size results in smaller p-values or stronger evidence against the null hypothesis, as long as the sample proportion remains the same and is in the direction of the alternative hypothesis.